rested upon my theological training. I have rested upon my years of being a Christian. I have rested upon my familiarity. He says, no more. He says, men, we must do the work of the Lord by the power of the Lord and with the Lord. And so he gave an invitation. How many pastors out there, he said, need a revival of the power of God in ministry? Everybody came to the altar. Listen to me, if you're a Sunday school teacher this morning, if you're an usher, deacon, trustee, whatever your job in the choir, we have to remember the importance of doing the work of the Lord by the energy of the Lord, and that is the Holy Spirit of God. We must have a conscious dependency. Now, we don't have to tarry any longer for the Holy Ghost. Some still tearing for him. We have him. He just needs to have more of us. We've got all of him. He needs to have more of us. And so often in our worship services, we are so mechanical. There is order to worship. The Bible says do things decently and in order. That's why we have a program. But we also need to have the freedom of God to bypass the program sometimes, to sing and to thank the Lord and to give praise to God and to acknowledge the fact that it is his spirit that is leading us and guiding us and directing us. Listen to what the apostles say, the same ones, the same ones who simply were given this power, the transcendence of power. They made it clear that the excellency of the power, here's what Paul says, but we had this treasure in earthen vessels, <coughs> that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. I like that. That the excellency, that is the excellency of the power for ministry, is not to be found in us. It is to be found in God. So not only do we see the transference of power, but the transcendence of power. But then there's the third thing, and that's the translation of power. Colossians 1.13 Colossians 1 and 13. Write that down. Here's what he says. Who hath delivered us from the power, and there's the word again, dunamis, of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of God's dear Son. The translation of power. What do we mean by translation? We mean to move from one place to another place. That's what translation means. To go from one place to another place. Colossians says that you and I, we've gone through a translation. We've gone from one place to another place. The place that we were in was the power of darkness. But God, through dunamis, has translated us mm -hmm. from the power of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear Son. Mm -hmm. Now that's some power. Yes. That's some power to be able to take you from one place Mm -hmm. To another place. Every time you lead a soul to Christ, there's a translation of power. Mm -hmm. That individual immediately goes from the power of darkness to the kingdom of God's dear son. That's why we can't go out there in our own strength. This is spiritual work that we're doing here. Jesus likened it to someone who goes into a house, and when he walks into the house, he finds that there's a strong man in the house. Yeah. 
He said, how are you going to steal the man's goods mm -hmm. until you first buy the strong man? And that's what Jesus did. He goes into Satan's house, can bind him because he's the almighty, and he can take those souls that are captive mm. 